All right, hello, greetings. Uh, so this is video number three. So in the first video, we looked at uh, problem 1A in the problem statement. So it's our first ChemCAD simulation where we set up an absorption unit. Then in the second video, uh, I just looked at quickly uh, making note of when I update the number of trays in my absorber, I also need to make sure I update uh, the tray number that my gas feed's being fed on. And the key is, is um, the way the tray labeling goes is my top tray is 1, my bottom tray is N. So when I update N, the number of stages, I need to also update N, the tray that my, or stage that my gas feed's being fed in on. Okay. Now in video 3 here, I'm going to flip over to our problem statement, right? And, and what we're told is, so kind of jumping around, is I just want to look at how I can set up a stripper. Okay, so I've got my absorber set up. I want to set up a stripper um, as is suggested here in, in uh, 2A. Okay, and then I want to then just show how I can connect the absorber to the stripper, right? And so I'm not going to do all of the detailed calculations, but to be able to show you how this this works, right? I'm not going to go through everything step by step, just because it'll take a long time. But we'll build it up to being able to connect them as we do in, in problem three. Um, but but yeah, okay. So all right, so so in problem two, right? So if we read it, we're going to um, you know add a stripper. So I'll first add that in isolation. Um, do 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 do, and so. Liquid feed to the stripper should be the liquid product from the absorber. So use stage six as liquid product mole fractions and product flow rate in kilomoles per hour from 1E. Okay, so now if I look at 1E, is essentially it's the same thing as 1A, okay, but all that's going to happen is in E, right, so E we went back to using six uh, stages, uh, flow rate of 100 kilomoles per hour, but we're going to change the water temperature to 10 degrees C, and then we are going to increase the pressure to two bars. Okay. So first to get up to 1E, okay. so my solvent flow rate, instead of 20 degrees C, I'm going to make this 10 degrees C and flash it. And then for um, my column, right, I want my column to operate at, at two bars. Okay. So in order to get my pressure to be two bars, so I need the feed, solvent, and absorber at two bars. So I just can't change my absorber to two bars. My pressure of my absorber needs to be equal to or less than that of my feeds. So I'll change my liquid to two bars, my gas to two bars, then my absorber. I could change the top pressure to two bars, or if I just delete it, Okay, it'll assume isobaric operation at a pressure uh, being the same as my feed streams. Okay, so I can run all since I just have one unit or run selected just to run that one. All right, but I run it. All right, and I might treat a gas in terms of mole percent. Right, I've really knocked down that concentration of acetone. Now it's it's less than uh, you know 0.2 percent. Okay, great. So I'm gonna click OK. Okay, and you know, not only did I knock down the acetone concentration, but I knocked down the uh, concentration of water as well, leaving in the vapor phase. Okay. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to scroll over, okay, and we're told to model a stripper. Okay, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw another SCDS column. Okay, so our stripper is also going to be modeled using an SCDS column. And eventually what we want is we want the liquid, so this is our liquid leaving trace 6. So this is going to be um, you know, our solvent in, right, which is going to be water with some acetone in it. We want to try and recover that in a stripper. So in a stripper, okay, I'm going to contact this with some gas, which I believe we're going to use steam in this problem, to try and recover pure water that I can then ultimately recycle back to my absorber. So what I want to do first is I'm going to model just the just the stripper, okay? Get that working in isolation, and then I'm going to link the absorber, right? This liquid stream uh, to my stripper and get it to run. And then next week we'll build it up where we'll add a recycle uh, as well. So then once I recover that water, I can send that back in here um, in my uh, initial absorber. But we'll play with that uh, come come next week. All right. So in terms of my absorber or my stripper, 
Okay, I'm going to need two feeds again. Okay, one's going to be my liquid, which is going to contain that solute that I'm trying to remove. Okay, I'm going to have my stripping gas coming in the top. Well, and actually, I, I must change it, right? So, and I, I didn't need to flip them. So, um, okay, I'm sorry, I'm just crazy, right? So, the liquid's still going to go on the bottom. So, it's this liquid is going to be fed up there. And then this is my gas coming in. So, it's not going to be as simple of a connect, but, but don't worry. So, all right, so let me just connect these two. Okay, there we have two products. Products need to get connected to those endpoints. And so string um, six down here, this is going to be my, my stripping gas. Okay, so just add the labels first to make, um, make sure I'm clear. And this is going to be my liquid in. Let me just move these a little bit so that those labels come up. Okay. All right, so now let's look at the stripper. So in terms of the liquid in, so liquid feed to the stripper should be the liquid product from the absorber, but at 85 degrees C in one bar, right? So we would need to add, in theory, once we connect them, a heat exchanger um, to change the temperature, but let's let's get this. So my liquid in okay, is going to be 85 degrees C and one bar. Okay. Then what is it going to be? Well, my liquid product leaving my absorber, let me see if I get this in kilomoles per hour. I'm going to see if this will let me copy. So there's... Oh, doesn't like control V, but I can right click. Okay, so I've got acetone. Water. And air. Bam. Okay, and it's at 85 degrees C in one bar. So there's my liquid stream. Let's see, in terms of my stripping gas, gas feed to the stripper should be pure steam at one bar. Okay, so it's going to be pure steam at one bar. So how I'm going to do that in my stripping gas, okay, is I'm going to specify a pressure of one bar. Oh, and what was the flow rate? Uh, set steam flow rate at 20 kilomoles per hour. Wait, so hold on. Uh, gas feed to the stripper should be pure steam at one bar. Use six stages. Be sure to put your stream, the stripping gas, on stage six. And the liquid from the absorber should be put in above stage one. The stripper is at one bar. Set stream flow rate at 20 kilomoles per hour, and we're told steam is superheated to 101 degrees C. Okay. So flow rate is 20 kilomoles per hour. Okay. And we're told, right, so I'll just specify this. I could have specified the, the mole fraction as well. And so it's at one bar. We're told we're at 101 degrees C, right, which corresponds to superheated steam. Cool. So there's my inlet gas. Then in terms of my column, we're told to use six trays again. Yeah. Yeah, so six six trays. So we're gonna use six trays again. Okay, and my liquid in. Okay, well that goes in on the top, that's tray one. My stripping gas in, that's tray six. Okay. And then we'll keep the pressure in since everything is at one bar. Cool. So if I click OK. 
Okay, now what I'm going to want to do is I'm not going to click Run All. Run All would run everything. I'm just going to click on my second unit op, and I'm just going to run Selected. So just running Selected is just going to run my selected unit op, which is my stripper. Okay, so now if I look at my treated liquid, so liquid in, liquid out. So now my treated liquid, right, I see that I've essentially knocked out most all of my acetone. So acetone mole frac right, is incredibly tiny. Essentially, it's pure water. And if I look at the specification, it said specifications of mole frac less than 1 times 10 to the negative 4. Yeah, we definitely have a mole frac less than 1 times 10 to the negative 4. Right, it's 1, 2, 3. Right, it's, um, you know, that's, you know, uh, 0 0.0009 uh, mole percent. And so uh, that'd be 0 0.00000. Uh, mole frac, right? So mole frac, 9 times 10 to negative 6, right? So it would meet said specifications. Okay. Cool. And so all I want to do now in, in terms of just, you know, how we would connect this is, you know, what I did, right, is I know that ultimately I want to take the um, solvent from my absorber and I'm going to send it to a stripper to try and recover it. Right, so you know my absorber, my separating agent is my solvent. Right, that's what's costing me money. Right, so and so I want to try and you know recover as much of that solvent as possible. Right, I want to minimize solvent that's being vaporized and leaving in the street of gas stream. Okay, but I also want to try and recover that solvent, and so that I can reuse as as much of it as possible. Okay, it'd be a waste just to um, discard um, our water here, and so I'm sending it to a stripper. I'm contacting with steam, right? And then the effect is I'm coming up with a liquid, which is essentially pure water, which will then hopefully be able to recycle back to my absorber. And so, um, yeah, so what I'm going to do is once I have this working right, right, so this works, and I just ran this unit just itself, I'm going to delete this stream 5, okay? And so this is me building this up to... Um, problem three. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this liquid, instead of just sending it to some product stream, is I'm going to send it into the top of my column right, and try to address this arrow so it looks looks good. So now I'm just going to directly take the output. Oh, and I forgot it. I can't just do that. So I'm going to directly take the output. Okay. I said, oh, I, I just can't do that because okay, we're, we're getting ahead of ourselves in the problem. But we're told we want to uh, change the temperature and pressure. Okay. Okay. And so right now, I have a temperature of 18.2557 degrees C and a pressure of two bars, leaving the first column. So I'm going to send that to a heat exchanger. Okay. So I have to drag in the heat exchanger. Okay, so remember, blue is input. Okay, so I'm going to go into one of these blue dots. Right, I could use that second blue dot if I wanted to use, say, cooling water. Um, but for now, right, we're we're just keeping things simple. Right, we're we're just getting started here. And then the outlet of that heat exchanger that's going to be fed into input here. So my heat exchanger. Okay, I'm just moving this so I see my temperatures. But I want to specify is I want to specify the temperature. Right, we're told we need to, you know, enter. Um, only one of the following. And so I want my exit temperature, temperature of stream 5, to be 85 degrees C. And then we can also specify a pressure drop. So I'm going to specify a pressure drop of, of one bar, which in this case, okay, this is just our first introductory elementary example. But this heat exchanger will take our temperature down, or temperature up to 85 degrees C and drop the pressure to, to one bar. Okay. So I'm going to click OK. And so if I just have my heat exchanger highlighted, okay, and I just run selected, okay, it'll just run the heat exchanger. So then the stream five coming out, right, is properly at 85 degrees C in one bar. Okay, that's great. And now that that's working, right, I can run just my stripper now, update my calculation with this new input stream five. Right, and there you have it. So now it's, you know, complete unit. So now my liquid leaving my absorber is sent to heat exchanger, which is then sent to a stripper.
to try and reclaim uh, my water. Okay. So, cool. Um, you know, that's it. So I, I did it part by part. Um, when I do run all, right, what's going to happen is when I run all, MATLAB's going to try and, you know, simultaneously solve my mass energy balance of my three units. Um, by solving each one in isolation, MATLAB or ChemCAD's able to get a good initial estimate of the solution, and so it's going to help um, ensure convergence of my uh, solution. Okay. Um, but, I, but I think that's it, right? And so what we'll, you know, add next class is, so now I have my, my treated liquid, and so the goal of treating my liquid was to try and recover my, my solvent that I could send back into my absorber. Okay, and so right here, right, we have a, a stream that's 200 kilomoles per hour of water. Okay, now you know notice that we do have a little bit more water here, and the reason for that is that some of our steam, right, so coming to the bottom here, my stripping gas is pure steam. Okay, coming in here is water at 85 degrees C, well, primarily water, and so I'm actually condensing some of that steam, um, and so my you know flow right here, right, is actually you know. Um, and so I'm condensing some of that steam. So that of that stripping gas, right? I have 20 kilomoles per hour of water. Okay, I actually only have 12.6 kilomoles per hour coming out, right? The rest, right, condensed out of solution, um, and that added to my my solvent that I'm trying to recycle. And just to put that in terms of mole percents, right? Now I have some you know solution coming off the top, which is um, uh, 80% water, right, and then the balance uh, acetone. But cool. Hopefully that gives you, you know, a picture of, you know, we created our absorber, um, we created our stripper, then I was able to add a heat exchanger in between to treat my uh, solvent coming out of my absorber or my liquid phase coming out of my absorber that then is sent to my stripper to try and recover. And then next class we'll build it up, we'll add a recycle. The recycles can just be a little finically, finicky numerically, which you know is more encouraging of taking this step by step before I recycle it to try and uh, increase my chances of, of convergence. Okay, but I hope that helps. Right, this was intended to be a, a very basic introduction uh, to ChemCAD and modeling. In this case, absorption and stripping and tying two units together, and then we'll continue to build upon this each week. Okay, let me know if you have any questions.